Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to make a tulip poplar bark bird's nest. So I wasn't planning on shooting this video today, but sometimes the woods dictate what you're going to do. So when I got out in the woods today, I saw this bright white branch laying in the underbrush. So we've had a lot of wind within the last couple days, and what happened is a tulip poplar branch got blown down. Now this is easily recognizable by this white uh, wood color. It almost looks like a deer antler when you're walking through the woods. So anytime I find a fresh, dry tulip poplar branch in the woods, that's a godsend. Uh, this has got a ton of uses, but what I got excited about today was when I saw the bark was still on part of the branch. So finding a down tulip poplar branch like this, it's going to do a lot of things for me. You know, if I do need to make a fire, this is a good soft wood which is going to break down easily. If I'm going to do any type of carving on something that doesn't necessarily need strength, like camp utensils or anything like that, a tulip poplar branch is soft, easy carving wood, so it's a great candidate for that. If I was in a situation where I needed to make a bow drill fire, a tulip poplar branch like this would be my number one choice. Today I'm going to be using the inner bark from this branch to make a bird's nest. Now this particular piece uh, had already stripped off and it's laying on the ground, and you can see the end of this is wet. And then right here where it gets a little bit flakier, you know, this is already dried. So the wet stuff's not necessarily bad, but for what I'm using it for today, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and reserve the dry stuff only for this. So this dry bark peels off pretty easily. It's dead. And what you want to do is try to retain it in as long a strip as possible. That just gives you more versatility. Uh, the inner bark of this tulip poplar is also great for cordage. So for a bird's nest, it doesn't matter as much, but for any type of cordage, I would like to have as long a strip as possible. And you see, no tools required. This peels right off. And this bottom stuff is quite a bit wet. So this wasn't as good as I had hoped for. You know, what I originally saw was this tanner bark, and then we start getting darker as it gets wetter. And then the bottom, you know, is pretty wet. But I'm going to try to utilize what I can off this, and I'll reserve the rest for later. So the process is going to be, you know, this is the inner bark. This is the outer bark, and how I like to break it off is just bend it and peel. So as I go through, I'm just sorting out the wet bark from the dry bark. That's all I'm doing right So I'm not giving up on the wet bark. I just am not going to be using it today. So if I was going to be making cordage, you know, the wet bark is uh, actually a little bit better. It's still, uh, you know, not rotted at all. If I needed it for a bird's nest, I could do the same process, just separate the inner bark from the outer bark, and then I would be putting it in my pocket and going about my business today and just letting my body heat dry the bark out. You know, if I was in a longer term situation, uh, I could also put the wet bark, you know, in my sleeping bag or around camp or by a fire that I'm going to be making with this stuff. So it's a resource and it pays the plan ahead and not just discard it. So without getting uh, too particular about this, you know, this is the dry stuff that I've got. You know, my wet bark is actually probably double that. Now, I'm going to process this down by actually pulling the fibers. And there's a couple different ways to do that. You know, you can just kind of rough it up. Let me see how nice that looks already. You know, the more, more surface area you give it, you know, the more chances it's got to be you know ignited 
also if there's any moisture in this which there is uh, that's going to let it dry a whole lot faster now as i'm doing this you know all the good stuff all the ultra fine fibers are just dropping right to the ground so i'm going to use my haversack set it out and then uh, i'll process the rest of this So this is a pretty marginal size bundle. I'm gonna take all this little fine fibers and put that right in the middle. All the bigger stuff I'm gonna move to the outside. You know, my medium sized stuff's kinda in the middle. So this is a very small tender bundle, but it's what I've got to deal with right now. All right, so with that little bit of dry inner bark that I got, I was able to get this small bird's nest. Now this is very marginal. If you know this was a bad situation, I would want you know probably double this, like a two-handed bird's nest of this type of material. If this is all I had right now, I would probably reserve it and either try to dry out the uh, wet bark that I've got in my pockets and maybe try a fire later in the day. I would augment this with maybe some beech leaves. Uh, the, you know, we had a fresh branch that drew, that blew down. So I would probably just continue a circuit around this area looking for more fresh poplar branches. There are other alternatives, but you know, for right now, you know, just as a demo, I can probably get this thing going. So for ignition today, we're gonna to be using uh, flint and steel again. I've got a piece of char cloth that we're going to be using. I'm going to put that on top of the stone. Okay, here we go. And I had a piece bounce under. Now with, uh, now with char cloth, you know, you've got a little bit of time. You can see it's glowing here. I'm gonna put this right, right into my bird's nest. Okay, that's pretty, pretty uneventful. And you see, you know, a bird's nest like this has a lot of heart to it. It burns really well, and it burns pretty long, and this is a small bird's nest. I've got it packed in there pretty tight, so it's burning fairly slow. You know, if I were to spread this out a little bit, um, you know, obviously then I'd get more heat, more of a blaze, and it wouldn't last as long. But, uh, you know, just seeing a branch like this, you know, down to the poplar branch, again, look for that white, you know, deer antler type wood. Uh, then pray that it's got some dry wood uh, bark on it. So the rest of the uh, wet tulip poplar bark, I'm just going to store in my haversack until it's needed. And that is uh, a tulip poplar bird's nest. Burns for quite a while, you know. And again, this is a marginal one. I would want to see a bird's nest double this size. You know, that's my best bet to give me a sure fire in the wilderness. All right, till next time. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.